Today I am sharing our Christmas traditions. Welcome back to Candlewick Library, I'm Cheryl. And I was asked the other day if I would be sharing my Christmas Eve traditions that I talked about in another video. And I hadn't thought about it yet, but I realized that's actually a really good idea. We have a lot of Christmas traditions and I should probably share not only my Christmas Eve ones, but the other ones as well. Many years ago when my kids were little, I had a free book for Snapfish and I used it to create a book about our traditions. And I'm gonna use this to, to share a few of them. Our Christmas traditions start on Thanksgiving. We spend the day doing our Thanksgiving things and then we write our letters to Santa. We have this little magic mailbox, we call it, that we put the letters in and then the next morning the girls will find something in there for them and their letter will be gone. We do it that way because the next day I would do Black Friday shopping and so I wanted to make sure I already had everybody's letter. And my husband and I do this as well. We both write letters and put them in there as well. And now with my daughters being 17 and 14, we still do this. And they will be the first to want to do it. They love doing it. So then that leads to Black Friday. I started Black Friday shopping out of necessity when our kids were little and we lived in Wisconsin. And I wanted to make sure I was getting the, the best deal I possibly could. And I went and I thought it was going to be something I would hate because I don't like crowds. That seems like the last place in the world someone like me would want to be, but I actually really enjoyed it. I, I had a lot of fun. I like getting a good deal. So it was fun to see how much I was able to get that I wouldn't have been able to. And it was also kind of funny because I saw a lot of people there as groups and I would just go by myself and I would see most people getting big things like TVs and all that, which is great. But for me, I'm like, I'm going for a toy or a book or a movie. And, but those little, those little savings made a huge difference to us at that time in our lives. And so I just continued with the tradition. So usually I just went by myself. One year, my, right after my youngest daughter was born, my mom was visiting and she went with me. And then I didn't go with anyone again until my daughters were old enough to want to go. So when we moved to Utah, I think that was when it was the first year that all of a sudden it was on Thanksgiving that they were actually doing it. And so then I went the first year, I think it was, that I went and I really didn't like it. It was even more crowded because so many more people are willing to stay up late than to get up early. But I still enjoyed the savings. As the years went by, I kept going and I would go on Thanksgiving, uh, but I really didn't like it. So then finally, when my, my oldest was old enough to know and uh, want to, she wanted to go with me. And so I said, okay, you can go with me. And we decided that instead of going out on Thanksgiving night, we would just get up early on Black Friday, like I had done in the first few years, and we would just go out. And I just assumed that nothing I wanted would still be there. But I actually was able to find most of the things I wanted still since I wasn't going for those big ticket items. And there was no one in the store. <laughs> it was amazing. It was the best shopping for Black Friday I ever had because we went into Walmart, I think at three in the morning or something, four in the morning, and there was maybe three other people there. And I still got everything, I think, except for one thing I wanted in Walmart. And then we went to Kohl's and we went all these different places. And by the time crowds started showing up, we were almost done. And so that was great. And she did that a couple years with me, but then the stores kind of stopped opening as early on Black Friday. And then now it seems like the last couple years, I think that they've stopped being open on Thanksgiving and it has been back to Friday again but none of them seem to be opening as early as they used to and the shopping is kind of extended for the whole month or the whole week. So it's just not as fun of an experience as it used to be, but I still went out. The last couple of years, my youngest daughter has finally taken over. My oldest daughter isn't interested anymore, so now my youngest daughter goes with me and we've, st we've still gone out and we've still been able to have some fun. So the Black Friday tradition now is that my youngest daughter and I go out, we go to a couple of stores, we get breakfast, usually at Chick-fil-A, and then we go to a few more stores and then we come home and I bring a Chick-fil-A peppermint shake. Uh, we call that Christmas in a cup, so I bring that home for my oldest daughter. When my kids were younger, I made these little elves and we had them arrive in a big box with, I mean, I put it out on the front porch, but they, wrote, they arrived with some treats and a little letter saying they would report to Santa or whatever. I had seen the elf on the shelf and kind of got the idea from that, but I didn't want to do it that way. I just wanted really cute little elves that sat 
on the floor or next to the tree or somewhere and they were just there to watch and it was just a cute thing they don't get up to mischief they i don't set out anything with them i don't do anything creative with them it's just they're just there and we still have them just sitting out there just for cute decoration now we always decorate our tree the weekend after thanksgiving it used to be sometime during that weekend and we would kind of decide when we got closer but now it is kind of changed to on black friday always listen to carpenter's christmas album while we decorate the tree and I always separate all the ornaments. I take them out and I put them in themes. I used to do this in my family as a kid. And so I now still do it with our ornaments now as an adult. I take oh, all the animals, all the nativity scenes, all of the yearly ornaments that we get, and I put them in piles and then we, I dole them out into four piles. We used to have a section of the tree, but this year I just said, okay, everybody just responsible for hanging them up on the tree somewhere and just make sure that you're not putting you know, two things that look exactly like next to each other. My daughters also each have their own little teeny tree that's in their room. And so every year we get a new ornament. We get ornaments, if we, if we go on vacation, we always get an ornament at the places that are really special to us. And sometimes that will be the yearly ornament, but sometimes that's just a vacation ornament and we still get a yearly ornament for something that happened in our family. And then I always get my girls something that they're interested in that year for them to put on their tree. And so I, I don't have their ornaments for this year. They already have them upstairs on their trees and I'm not sure if they'd want me to share them or not. But this is the one we got for our family this year. It's kind of hard to, that one's not the good side. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's Koroks from Legend of Zelda made to look like stained glass. And we just, I got this on Etsy. And the reason for this to be our ornament this year is that this year, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 came out. And my husband and my daughters have been waiting for that for years. And so, of course, they all had to play it together. They were all excited about it. And the Koroks um, have been kind of a joke a few times when they were playing the game. And so I thought that would be a good one to represent this year. When we're done decorating the tree, we make hot chocolate. And on Thanksgiving, we always make mu uh, Muddy Buddies or my daughters call it Puppy Chow. And so on the night we decorate the tree, we make hot chocolate and we have the Muddy Buddies and we leap around the tree. And that could be on the couch or on the floor or you can bring mattresses in. We've done it all the different ways and we watch Barbie A Perfect Christmas. And we all love that movie. Well, maybe my husband doesn't, but we do. And it's such a fun tradition that we all look forward to it. And they have this little dog stuffed animal that they have like a, a, just kind of an inside joke with that always has to come down and watch as well. When our girls were little, of course, we always went to visit Santa as well. Uh, we don't do that anymore. And then we have a lot of countdowns to Christmas. So my mom, when I was growing up, had what we call an Advent streamer. And it has the little bows that go all the way down it and you put candy on it. I can't remember if she always had candy canes on it or Tootsie Rolls, but we always had some kind of candy like that on it. And then each person, we take turns taking one off every day leading up to Christmas. She made one of those for all of us when we got married and had our own families. And I started out with Tootsie Rolls, I think, and I, I think I did can mini candy canes at one point, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But the last few years, I realized that the little mini candy bars would fit really well on them too. And my oldest daughter's favorite candy bar is Kit Kat. So that's what I've just been using for the past few years. So yeah, so we get that every single day. When my oldest daughter was a little, little, little girl, I really loved that Countdown to Christmas tree that Pottery Barn sold that had the little pockets you'd put little surprises in or whatever but I couldn't afford it. And so I decided I could make it myself. And I went to Hobby Lobby and I got a really big piece of green felt for like two or three dollars. And then I got a bunch of little felt. My mom has all these really cute felt ornaments she made for her tree. And she gives us each one. As every baby's born, she makes another one. And they have our name on them and they're just little different characters. And so I asked her if I could have the patterns for those. And I used those mostly for the pockets. And then a few of them, I just invented my own pocket based on either looking at the Pottery Barn tree or looking at other things. And so I made the bottom pocket for the day one a really, really big pocket that would fit a book. And then all the rest are just little rectangles and have the different characters on it. It goes all the way to Christmas, which is the boring one for my girls because it just says Merry Christmas. And then in each pocket, I either put like some, some little thing, like sometimes there were candy canes in it or like a little toy or something, little erasers. And usually it's just a piece of paper that will either direct them to the tree to open up a present that has a number, that number on it. And it will be a puzzle or some kind of toy or something um, or some kind of activity that we can do together. Or it will just be an activity that we're doing that day. So, for example, my daughter's birthday, it says happy birthday. That's pretty boring for her. Uh, but it will say, you know, go open your first present. Uh, or there's one that will say we're going to the drive through the Christmas lights tonight. 
or we're having a baking day because that is one of our traditions. We tend to break it up into sugar cookies during one day, gingerbread cookies, gingerbread houses, snickerdoodles, uh, the little turtles that we make that are pretzels and a Rolo and we use an M&M instead of a nut. And, um, and we break those up so that those can be different activities for different pockets. We usually have like a game day or a movie marathon or a readathon, family parties. And this year, I think the only thing we have to go to is my family's Christmas party. So that will be in one of them. And so that's what I use the tree for, just activities and little, little gifts. And like I said, the first pocket is always a book. And this year it was the Christmas Carol, the annotated version from Owl's Nest Publisher. And so we will open it up and we will read it. And if it's a picture book, we read it that night. If it's with this one, with it being a chapter book, we read the introduction and then we'll continue reading it throughout the month. I try to send out Christmas cards every year with a picture and with a letter. I am not feeling it this year, but I, I'm, I'm gonna try to still get it out. It's usually not a full family picture. It's usually just a picture of my daughters because I take pictures of them at the beginning of the school year and they're usually really cute. So I try to just use those. So again, most of our traditions throughout the month center around those countdowns to Christmas and the activities that are kind of normal. I used to always put a snow day in there too, but that's very unpredictable. So I don't often do that anymore, but we try to make the whole month full of reading and watching movies and playing games and doing puzzles and making it really, really, really fun and magical as much as we can. And then we also have a Jesse tree. I made a bunch of little ornaments that went along with it. And the first version I made was an LDS themed one that I found online and, and it all had kind of that spin to it. So when we left the LDS church over the last couple of years, last year I made some new ornaments. I got rid of the ones that were LDS and I made some new ornaments in their place based on a just very traditional Jesse tree. And so we would go through the Jesse tree stories and put the ornaments on the tree every single day. But we've done it so many years now with both versions that this year I decided that I was just gonna set up the tree with the ornaments already on it. So I'll show that. That way my girls will look at it and they will see the ornaments and they will know the stories because we've talked about them so many times and pulled the little ornaments out and everything. So. We won't be doing that, but we'll be doing our normal scripture reading. And then of course, when it gets to Christmas Eve and Christmas, reading the Christmas story. On the day before Christmas Eve, we call it Christmas Adam. And a few years ago, my husband came up with this tradition. So this is his contribution. Uh, that on Christmas Adam, we go out to dinner, but everybody gets to pick exactly what they want. So we do take out, we, obviously we can't just go and sit in a restaurant four times. But we each get to pick exactly what we want. So usually we end up going to four places and it can be anything. So one year my youngest picked Little Caesars pizza. So she had a whole Little Caesars pizza to herself. My husband has picked like Hawaiian food or something like that. My oldest daughter always picks Taco Bell. And I tend to either do, sometimes I've done Taco Bell, just, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll have that too. And then we don't have to go anywhere else. Uh, sometimes I've had Chick-fil-A, sometimes I've had Neaters. This year I might do Costa Vida, I don't know yet. Depends on how I feel that day, but we always do that. So we go to four different places, then we come home and watch a Christmas movie and we all get to eat whatever it is we want that night. Then we get to Christmas Eve and that one is my favorite. In the Advent tree pocket for Christmas Eve, it will have them go to open a package under the tree. Now there have been a few years when we weren't able to do this, but most of the years we've been able to do this. And that is a new Lego set. So this, this is the, this is the one for this year. And my husband loves putting Legos together and so does my oldest daughter. My youngest doesn't love it as much, but it's something that they really enjoy doing together. And so that's gonna be a really fun tradition to be able to do. And that kind of ends up being something that people are doing all morning and into the afternoon. The years that we couldn't do a Lego set, we've done a puzzle. So there was always kind of something to put together that day that would take a little bit of time and cause people to work together and our family to be together. When my girls were little, we would feed them something and then put out reindeer food and cookies and milk for Santa. And we would open our Christmas Eve package and then we would watch Muppets Christmas Carol. And then they would go to bed and my, I would make uh, Cafe Rio style burritos for my husband and I, and we would watch my favorite Christmas movie, which I'll get to in a second. But that's changed over the years. Oh, and we would track, and we would track Santa on NORAD all day long. And so we'd always be checking back with that. And it was when he would finally get to like the United States that we'd be like, okay, time for bed. And we'd go do that. We'd always read the night before Christmas. But now it's changed a lot, obviously, as they've gotten older, but there's a few things we still do. So. I watch my favorite Christmas movie during the day now. And so that's either while they're doing Legos and or a puzzle or 
after they finished, but at some point during the day of Christmas Eve, I watched my absolute favorite Christmas movie, which is The Bishop's Wife with Cary Grant. And then I make a shepherd's dinner for us for dinner. So I set out a big platter and bowls and I try to have crackers and cheese and meat and nuts and you know maybe grapes. Uh, it changes like kind of every year depending on what I can find. We like to do that. We, we have it with our special Christmas dishes. We all sit together at the table and talk and have that together. And then we do our, our Christmas boxes and then we watch both of my daughter's favorite Christmas movie which is The Muppets Christmas Carol and just love it. We have so much fun with that. And then at that point, we can sometimes we talk, sometimes we read more books, sometimes we go to bed. It just depends on how the night has gone. In our Christmas Eve boxes, what we have is a tradition. I think a lot of people have this tradition. You know, I had it in my family growing up, and that was the new pajamas. When I had children, I added a book and some other things. So we each get our new Christmas pajamas and we get a book. The reason I started that was because. I thought that would be a great thing to have so that if the girls woke up in the morning and it wasn't time yet for us to want to be awake, because they definitely woke up really early when they were little, that they would have their book and they could read it. And of course, when they were little, it was picture books and then it got uh, more advanced as they got older. And so we all get pajamas and a book. I used to wrap up a new movie and we'd watch that sometimes, uh, but I don't really do that anymore. But we also have a game. So I wrap up a new game. So we get our pajamas, we get our book, and we get a new game and we play it together. That's just been such a fun way to celebrate Christmas Eve. This year I got this game, Museum Suspects. Hopefully this will be fun, but that's what we'll get. I'm gonna show you what I got this year for our boxes besides the game. For my husband, I just got these blue pajama pants with cabin and trees on it and a blue Shirt, they don't match exactly, but close enough. For my pajamas, I got these red and green plaid pants. I got this Christmas book tree t-shirt from the Well Read Collective. And then I got my oldest daughter um, shorts that match my pants and a Beyblade t-shirt because she really likes Beyblade. And then my youngest really likes uh, Kuromi from Sanrio. So I got some Kuromi pants and a Christmas shirt with her two favorite characters, Chromi and My Melody. I know what I'm getting because I buy my stuff. <laughs> but uh, for my book, I'm getting The Tudor's Daughter from Julie Klassen. And my oldest, I got this um, Pokemon book that she already has, but I got her, it got up in Japanese. She really wanted that in Japanese. It was something she asked for. So she's gonna be really excited about that. And then my husband and my youngest daughter are not as big of readers as me and my oldest daughter are. So I just grabbed The City of Ember for my husband. I don't know if he'll read it or not, but if he doesn't, I will. And then my youngest really has gotten into crocheting this year. So I got the Woobles Crochet uh, pattern book. So that's why I love Christmas Eve so much. It's just full of traditions and fun things all day long. On Christmas Day, we now have a rule that it usually, we usually have to wait until about seven, and I think last year it might have even been eight, to come downstairs. And we, I have the presents. Mine and Doug's are usually under the tree, but the girls are next to their stocking. And their presents are all wrapped. We still put them from Santa, and even though they know, they just they still like that. And for stockings, we usually just do um, the little things, anything that's really small and fits in there. We used to do like a whole, I had a whole list of things and I got something for each name, but we've kind of gone away from that the last few years because I felt like that sometimes um, now that they're older, they didn't always have something in each thing they wanted and I was just kind of buying something to fit it that I didn't need. So now I just buy whatever I feel like I want to buy for them that's, that is, that they'll really like that will fit in a stocking. We all open our stockings first, like everybody does it at the same time. And then we break and we have breakfast. We used to make monkey bread. Sometimes I still do that, but I make these special muffin things for Thanksgiving and we always have a lot left over. So I've started freezing those and then pulling them out again on Christmas. So that's probably what I'll do this year. I do have a bunch in the freezer. And then we just take a break and we just have fun and talk and you know, look at the things we've got in our stockings. And then we start the presents and we go in order. So usually we start youngest. So Maddie will open a present and then Abby will open a present and then either I, I will or Doug will or whatever. And we just keep going around. So each person opens a present and we all pay attention to what everybody's opening and we each get our turn and it makes it last a long time. We of course read the Christmas story and then we just spend the day pretty much enjoying the gifts that we've gotten. 
and hanging out together and just having a fun relaxing day. We usually stay in our pajamas all day. And then at dinner time, I make a nicer dinner. It's usually ham and mashed potatoes or baked potatoes and some kind of vegetable or something. We use our nice china. My oldest daughter does not eat pork, but I still like to have ham. So we tend to either get chicken or turkey or something else for her to have. And then we usually drink cranberry ginger ale if I can find it. And we just relax the rest of the night. So that's all of our Christmas traditions. When it comes to then later on in the month for New Year's Eve, we some years we get new calendars. We always get a new game on New Year's Eve too and we spend the night watching movies and playing games together and usually have just like snack appetizer type foods. So those are all of our Christmas traditions and uh, let me know if you do any of the same things or if you have really fun traditions you love. I hope you enjoyed hearing about them.